Hello everyone, this is Bjorn Speedstreet from Solwork and you're listening to Brutally Delicious Podcast. Hey, you're listening to the Brutally Delicious Podcast. I am Bruce. Hey, Bruce, can you turn down the gain on your microphone a little bit? Uh, You're a fucking pain in my ass. Yeah, hold on. I know. I thought you were just interrupting me to interrupt me. No. Because I was flowing for a minute. Yeah, you're you're flowing like my hair in the <laughs> 80s. <laughs> or 90s, I should say. Right. Hold on. Let's see. Yeah. You ever seen that photo of me with a spiral perm? I have not, but I totally want to now. Oh, I'll send it to you. It's pretty funny. Uh, is that any better? Yeah, it's a lot better. Okay, great. So, yeah, I'd love to see it. Anyway, you ready? <clears throat> yeah. Hey, welcome to the Brutally Delicious Podcast. I am Bruce. I'm bald, but I used to have a spiral perm, and my name is Chris. <laughs> we probably didn't need to know any of that. You just ruined everybody's, again. It, people was, are, it was the late 80s, early 90s. Come on. People are uh, tuning out before they even tune in on this damn show. <laughs> we scared them away in the first five seconds. Hey. Is there a way? Is there a way to post a picture on the uh, anchor page, or maybe on the Facebook page, so everybody could go see it? Yeah, there is. Yeah, yeah, we need to see that for sure. Okay, I'll send you one. Awesome. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway, today we're going to continue with the seventy thousand tons of uh, metal series that you know you weren't on, but I was. Yeah, fuck you. <laughs> but by the anyway, way, do you want do you want that picture with me with the green scrunchie, or do you want it just like normal? Oh, no, we need the green scrunchie for sure. (laughs) (laughs) Anyways, so 70,000 tons of metal that you went on, you fucking asshole. Right. Uh, We've got soil work today. I had a chance to speak with Bjorn, uh, great, great metal band out of Sweden. And I don't know if you know this, but he actually did an episode of Brutally Delicious, I don't know, like two or three years ago. And he made his grandmother's or somebody in his family's homemade Swedish meatballs. Oh, wow. How was it? It was fucking great. One of the bigger episodes. He did a really nice job. I mean, it's like almost like he had culinary training. He went through every step, you know, perfectly. He had the knife skills down. He's the man. I am. Uh, I'm hungry. Yeah, me too. And uh, but he was great. And I'm hoping that uh, they get back here to the States because I don't think I've seen them around or touring around anywhere by me in years so it was really cool to be able to catch them i actually got to see them in 2014 on seventy thousand tons of metal oh you know that's funny i didn't know they were on it before yeah yeah and they had to um they had to replace their drummer i can't remember what happened the drummer broke he went to megadeth no no the drummer at the time broke his leg or something right right before the cruise so they had to get dirk van buren to, to fill in and it was just an unbelievable show apparently he learned the songs like on the boat, and then <laughs> really, yeah. I don't know the whole story. I don't know how it all went down. I just remember that he had to fill in at the last minute uh, because their drummer had some other issue. I think he broke his leg, so he couldn't play. Oh wow! And it was an unbelievable show. And that was back when it was on the Majesty, so you could stand behind the stage and watch the drummer play. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. That was on the pool deck, right? Yeah, on the pool deck. Yeah. And it was unbelievable, man. I don't know. Like Many people probably don't know this, but Dirk is like probably one of the best metal drummers in the history of heavy metal. Wow. So, so uh, yeah, he's freaking amazing. I think he was, I think Dirk was playing with Devin this time. So, I don't Anyways. know about that because Devin, when he played on this boat, um, he said they had trouble getting his band in. And they did the same sort of, he showed up and they rehearsed in Miami for like two days. He had a brand new band. Yeah. There was something going on with, uh, I don't know, customs or whatever happened. They couldn't get his band in. Wow. So he was like, this is like the first time we've played live. On opening night, I saw him on the, uh, at the Royal Theater. And he was fucking great anyway. He's Devin. Oh, God. The guy, I mean, that guy, Devin is a, a monster. But, you know, like, I, I don't know if you've ever watched, um, like, uh, there's a pickup company. I think it's Seymour Duncan. And they do this um, thing where an artist comes in and they just play their songs to the backing tracks. 
And Devin walked in, and he, he's playing like the fastest, craziest, hardest shit to play. And he's just like, it was flawless. He's like, oh, maybe I should do another take. You know? <laughs> like, <it was> just <laughs> and he's the funniest, nicest guy in the world, too. I think I sent you that. Uh, he did an interview with me about that metal or not shit back, or the uh, rock blots thing that I sent you. And he's like so spur of the moment and off the chain. Like, I don't know where his thought process comes from. <laughs> <laughs> He's fucked. <laughs> so real quick, cause I know this is not a, uh, a, uh, Devin Townsend podcast, but on the boat, the first night he came out onto the stage and there was like this applause, but I guess it wasn't big enough. So he's like, hold on. We're going to go out back off stage. I'm going to come back on with dramatic, more dramatic effect. <laughs> and he came out like in this really dramatic way. And it wasn't enough. So then he walked back off stage again, and they played like this really dramatic music. And then he walked back on, <laughs> and then took the stage. <laughs> it, it was Dirk. Dirk was his drummer for seventy thousand. Oh, it was okay. Yeah, yeah. So that's how we're going to tie it back into soil work. Yeah, that's beautiful. I love how you just came full circle with it. Yeah, yeah. No, Dirk is a monster, and if if you're going to play with Devin Townsend, you have to be a monster. You can't yeah. be. You can't be just average or even above average. You have to be perfection to play with that guy. So on today's episode, then we're going to turn it right back over to uh, the boat. We're going to get Bjorn, okay, in the room and see what he has to say. But before we get started, yeah, since I've got since I've got nobody else, you ready for your uh, quiz? Oh yeah, I'm ready. I am a two hand job. I can slip out while you're eating me. Pulling on my ears gets me off. <laughs> the way i want to answer this i can't put out in the public because i just reapplied for my work permit in the u.s so i don't right. want to get deported <laughs> right so you're gonna take the high road no <laughs> all right I'll answer it for you. What it's is it? Ear, it's an ear of corn. Ah! <laughs> See what I did there? I, as soon as he said that, I was in Pornhub land. I was like, <laughs> what the hell is going on here? Is this some type of threesome? Like, what's happening over here? <laughs> so with all that being said, let's go ahead and join the conversation with Bjorn. Okay. All right. Cool. <laughs> so uh, you said you've done this before. You guys have played a lot of the European festivals as well. Mm. How does it compare being confined on a boat like this or this kind of floating festival to a European um, destination sort of thing? Good question. I mean, it, it's it's slightly more claustrophobic <laughs> in yeah. a way, but but mostly a really good time. And, and you know, it's like you, you combine vacation with, you know, I still don't really see what I do as, as a job, but it is in a way, you know, um, but it's... It's interesting. You sort of switch. You know, I have my girlfriend with me as well on on, on, on this uh, cruise, and um, sometimes it's interesting to 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 switch between. I'm not I'm not saying that I'm a completely different person, but it's like you're representing the band still, but then you're hanging out with the fans, and then you're actually putting on a show, and then you also have your and girlfriend with you. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. It's it's. Um, it's sometimes not an easy easy switch, but at the same time, it's it comes. You, you learn how to deal with that, and it comes out more natural. What about English. like? And the, so this is my fifth year, and I know it's ten year, and you've done it before. What about yeah. like being confined with the fans? Is that? Is that I don't mind it. I th I think uh, you know. Of course, there are times when you're more in the mood than other right. other times, but I, I'm usually very easy to deal with. I you know. I don't throw any tantrums because right, you know. Right. So uh, no, I mean I think I think it's fine, and, and everyone's so happy on board and and not pushy, just really, you know. It's come easy. a long way. This is a pretty cool festival now. I think. It's, yeah. I was yeah. on the 2011 where they just kind of flew by the seat of the pants and didn't know what to do. And yeah. so now it's so refined, and you know I think everybody kind of gets along. You could be eating dinner next to Cronus from Venom and nobody's really bothering him until he's done and then ready to yeah. move on to the next yeah. thing. No, I mean, it's it's fine. You know, It's cool. Awesome. So, record-wise, your new record this year, which is one of the uh, one of the better ones I think of the year, when you guys are writing, um, do you find it because you've been around for a while, but do you find it difficult not writing the same record? Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah Coming up sense. with new stuff? Yeah, I mean... <clears throat> 
I think I felt that more like 10 years ago. And and then something happened. Obviously, there was a little bit of a lineup change, and then you know David came in, and, and which also became a, a major songwriter. You know, and and it inspired me to pick up the guitar. So <clears throat> it was we're sort of starting a new era. I mean, it sounds very I don't know pretentious, I guess. That, <laughs> you know, but it it really feels that way, and I think we found you know, new inspiration and, and a different way of expressing ourselves and I think that that's the path that we've been on s since then, especially with the Living Infinite, you know, the double right. album and that's how we sort of reinvented ourselves and it was like an experiment, you know, mm -hmm. it's like wow, you know, we found new new ways through that album, so that was right. crucial and I think ever since then I, 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 I felt that it's been quite easy to not repeat ourselves too much. I mean, of course, Sometimes you get stuck. Well, I mean, your, your style is always the same anyway, so this, some of it's got to be there. But I, yeah, yeah. But right. I mean, we've developed our sound, and I mean, the, the new album. I think you can you can definitely draw comparisons to to uh, you know the three first albums, right? You know, and but you but can it also wouldn't be, it wouldn't be soil work without that sort of comparison too, though. Right? No, no, exactly. So I mean, it's uh, I, I'm I'm very happy. Where where we are right now, and and it feels like there's a constant flow of, of inspiration, and uh, we will keep developing our sound. And I think, you know, um, I think we sound fairly unique out there. You know, yeah. it's 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 hard to do. You know, and not saying that you always have to sound so damn unique. You know, it but can be just good metal. Right. You know, but I don't know. I think we found a nice recipe. You know, when you're writing, are you guys like writing? All in the same spot, like uh, in the old days, where you bounce things off each other yeah, in the room, or yeah. you're just sending stuff via like email and files. Yeah, it's more email. It's very unsexy the whole thing, but <laughs> <laughs> but right. it's uh, yeah. I mean, there there are definitely times when it's like, oh, I wish we could jam again, but it's it's uh, then again, it's you know, we only meet meet up when we have to rehearse for a tour, mm -hmm. and uh, that is not ex as exciting as it used to be. You know, to rehearse. In, in a so technology sort of has a double-edged sword, right? Because yeah. 20 years ago, you would have had to get in the same room to play. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, we did jam a lot, like especially three first albums, and, and that was such a great kick, you know? And I, I don't think it would be really the same thing anymore, but there are times when I would like to try, you know? Yeah. But this works too. I mean, it's, it, it, it's, it sounds like a band, and it is a band. Oh, you know? sure so is. Yeah, a, I mean, I'm not uh, taking anything away no, from No, no, exactly. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I know you guys got booked on this last minute. Was mm -hmm. that uh, was that hard to pull it all together? Well, I was in Italy uh, with my girlfriend at her parents, and and it was Christmas, and, and I got that call. It's like you want to do the cruise? It's like well, we we talked about it that you know we might not do that, and and then it's like yeah, but there's a band that jumped off, and it's like all right. Let's so you, do it. So, so you really knew uh, like Christmas, that, like yeah, week, like a week and a half before. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It, so it, it was crazy, and and what was in Italy, and I was actually looking forward to not travel at all for a while. <laughs> right. You know, Italy is not far from Sweden, but still, I was like, because I'm 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 going on vacation in in February to Arizona as well, um, and um, so that wasn't really, you know, when I s sort of put my mind to something, you know, it's like okay, January, I'm gonna relax and right. get in shape and blah 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 and all that. And then when something breaks that sort of plan, I have a, sometimes a hard hard time like sort of processing. Yeah, it. yeah. But two days after, it's like okay, let's do it. You know why not? And I'm I'm glad we did. You know, was it's, it it's uh, was it difficult prepping, or you guys had been on the road for a while, so it was just a matter of getting? No, that was easy because we just did uh, some some shows in Finland right before Christmas, so that that was fine. You know, so it was just a matter of. Well, getting flight tickets to begin with, and, and all that stuff, you know. So, so, uh, and so, I mean, I just came home and changed clothes, and then off really. To, yeah. So, I'm not familiar with how the European side works. What about like work visas and stuff? Is that was that a difficult thing, or you don't have to have one for the cruise? No, because it's international waters. So oh, so it's, you got lucky because you couldn't pull it off on a no, U.S. No. cruise. I mean, on a U.S. thing, right? No, no, I no exactly. Uh, there's no way we could have gotten like a visa. You know. So, because it's an international. Water, it's, it's enough with ESTA. Even though you flew into wherever, it's still international, so it's good. Yeah, yeah. 
Oh, that's cool. like in transit, I guess. Yeah. So that's probably why a lot of these guys make it here. Exactly. I, yeah. I, I, didn't, I didn't understand that how they yeah. could pull it off. Yeah, no, that's it. the only way. We don't get some of these shows here in the U.S. because it's, no. I guess it's too hard for you guys to make it over. Well, it is a process, you know, and 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 we've been over so many times, and we we haven't toured, done a full tour on on this album, and yeah, it, it's it sucks, you know, but um, I think it's going to happen within you know near future, but at least. At least we got to do this cruise, and and you know, and of course, a lot of people got angry, you know, that this is going to be the only show on on this side of the Atlantic, and and it is what it is. But we're working on it. So. Right. Mm. It's not easy, like you said. No. So going back to uh, to the writing process, though, when you guys are writing, are you writing with the live setting in mind, like how it's going to come across on stage, or are you writing a song just specifically, like for a song's sake? Um, it happens that you have sort of a, you know, live situation in mind, sort of how it would come across, you know, in a, when you play the songs live. Uh, but I, I, I this will be a great crowd. Thing yeah, there. but at the same time, I, 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 if you focus too much on that, I, I think it becomes very much of a, I don't know, it, it, it's going to lose the presence in, in, a, in a way if you don't connect with pictures in your mind and you know, that, that's how it works with me, especially with melodies. I, I think I'm... Sometimes I feel like I'm better at, at uh, expressing myself through melodies than through lyrics, for example. Oh, really? It, yeah, but I mean, I've, I've done some good lyrics too, don't sure, get me wrong, no, no, no. and I keep on, you know, connecting, but... Musically, it's it's it's. I don't really think of a stage I don't know, when I hear a melody or a, or a riff. It's like more sort of abstract pictures, right? You know that I connect to more of a meaning kind of thing. Yeah, gotcha. Hmm. What do you guys have? Uh, I know you said you're taking a break here. What do you have planned for the? Um, doing the festival circuit again here in the summer. We're doing, I think, around seven festivals with with soil work, and then we're gonna go on tour with the Night Flight Orchestra in all of March through Europe, and then uh, a bunch of festivals with the Night Flight Orchestra as well. So that's a, a, a tour package, or is that a separate? I'm not familiar with it. Is that a? Oh, you know, you don't know about the Night Flight I Orchestra. Don't. No, it's it's a band that I have together with David. Um, plays guitar and solo mm -hmm. and also Charlie D'Angelo from Arch Enemy and, and uh, uh, we've been around for 10 years and we're on Nuclear Blast as well oh, and, really? it's, and it's like late 70s early 80s sort of cinematic rock Oh really? Yeah, like okay. very '80s and I'm, very. Well, that's that's my era. Oh, I, I grew I'm up sure like, you're gonna love it if you have. I mean, yeah, that I grew up like be, mid '80s kind of thing. So yeah, it, there's a lot of Foreigner and Journey, but also a little bit of ABBA. A oh really? Bit of, yeah, it's like total different. Like, so wow, check so, that out. So what kind of crowds are you attracting to that? Very mixed. We've been doing really because good I'm, tours. I'm assuming you, know? you get Soil Work fans because yeah. of the connection, but you probably get other. Yes, absolutely. Everything like, you know, hipster kids or whatever, and, <laughs> and metalheads, and I've seen people, you know, dancing, wearing behemoth patches, and, you know, to... I mean, when when you listen to the music, you'll, you'll get it, how bizarre... I'm going to go back to the room and check it out. Yeah, no, yeah, that's great. It, no, I was not, hip, not hip to that at all. I thought there was a touring package. Yeah. So, lastly, and you touched on it, because she's going to interrupt me here in a second, because right. we're at 15, yep. but um, you kind of touched on it as ready... You've been around for this long, so your shows, forget about Night Flight Orchestra, your shows are probably mixed generational as well too, right? You've got people like myself bringing their kids to see yeah. soil work. Hmm. That's got to be pretty cool, right? It is very cool, yeah. And it's 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 very mixed, and, and we still get new fans, you know, and kids too coming out to the show, so that's... I'm grateful. I mean, that's the next generation you know, I, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's really And ticket nice. sales, and that, that's pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. I don't really have anything else. All right. All right, what is up? It is Pathos back again with another pick of the day on the Brutally Delicious Podcast. What I lay before you today, a baited mass of flesh with their song, Gun to Your Head. This is from their latest EP entitled, Not Earned. And the band has recently been signed to Justified Insanity Records, including artists such as Michigan's own Cardiac Rupture, these guys are going to be with the Hasten Revelation Tour, March 7th through the 14th, starting in Fort Worth, Texas, and ending in Las Vegas, Nevada. So check them out if you get an opportunity. Also, they will be gracing the stage of Exoto Fest in Mexico in April. 
that's really cool for some local guys from Tennessee to go all the way to a foreign country and play their awesome, slamming, brutal death metal. Obviously, everything from Abated Mass of Flesh up until this point has been top quality, slamming, brutal death metal. One thing I noticed about this song in particular, it seemed to have more of an old school vibe, think gore obsessed from Cannibal Corpse type of era, early 2000s death metal. Combined with that modern deathcore sound, really creates the sound that Abated Mass of Flesh is. If you know these guys previously, you know that they are a great live act. You know that they bring it. You know everything that they create is of the utmost heaviness that they can possibly do. This latest release is available on most streaming platforms. And if you're not familiar with their earlier material, you can go to Bandcamp.com and search Abated Mass of Flesh. Download their entire discography and check them out. You will not be disappointed. Overall, I can't say anything else. Then go search them, support them, buy some merchandise, buy some CDs, download their digital albums. Go discover this awesome band for yourself. And until next time, this is Pathos on the Brutally Delicious Podcast. Hello out there. Yes, hello out there, everyone. I'm Hal Schwartz. And I'm Flynn McClain. Together we host None But the Brave, a podcast dedicated to the music and career of Bruce Springsteen. Bruce and E Street Band are on tour right now for the first time in six years, and we're taking a detailed look at what's happening on stage in our bi-weekly episodes. We've also been recently joined by some very exciting guests, including rock journalist Warren Zanes and Stephen Hyden, Backstreet's Magazine founder Charles Cross, and Barstool's Kirk Menahan. If you're a diehard Springsteen fan, this is the show for you. So please subscribe to Nim But the Brave on your favorite podcasting platform, and we hope to see you further on up the road. Thank you so much! We'll be seeing you!